Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Something big today. Daft Mill 15 cask strength bottled in 2022. Now this kind of starts with a bit of a sad story. I was lucky enough to win one of these in a ballot from Berry Brothers and Rudd. And this year has been a bit of a challenging year for me on all fronts, uh, both professionally, not necessarily personally, but um, you know, house renovations and house stuff. It can become very stressful for, for everyone. And um, nonetheless, we got over it. And when I won this last year, I was sat there going, this is gonna be my New Year's Eve slash Christmas day whiskey. And a couple of weeks ago, we put up some shelves in our spare room because I'm hoping eventually to have like a Whiskey Wednesday office somewhere in this house, either in the basement, which we're trying to renovate, or upstairs. And I put all these beautiful bottles on display. And then uh, one day I was at work on a Saturday and I got a call from my girlfriend and she's like, the shelves fell down. And I was like, it's okay. Are you okay? Because apparently the noise was incredible because our house is quite echoey. That probably didn't help at all. Um, and she's like, only one bottle broke. And I was like, oh, that's fine. Like, out of curiosity, which one was it? And it was a cash strength Highland Park batch three, uh, which was a little sad because that was a really, for me, quite a meaty, complex Highland Park. And then I came home, uh, she was working late and I was picking up all the bottles and cleaning up the glass and stuff. And I noticed the seal in this had bust. Um, they're just like foil seals and it, something must have hit it with some force. I thought the cork had broken. The cork's actually in pretty good condition. Um, but yeah, the seal busted and I thought, well, let's share. So I took it in work and um, people got to try, uh, some of my colleagues got to try Daft Milk because they'd never tried it before. I've sent some samples to uh, other managers who work in the company I work for. And you can kind of see a little bit on the label um, there is where it's been impacted on like the one and between the five and stuff like it must have hit something pretty hard this thing but now I have opened a bottle of Daft Mill 15 it was going to get opened anyway but here we have it and I forget how wonderful these tall bottles of Daft Mill are very simple very elegant once you see it you'll never forget it <coughs> and I reviewed the Dow the Daft Mill 2006 release a couple of years ago I think it was a 2006 it's set over there somewhere just out of eyesight and I adored it um, I didn't necessarily think it was worth like a hundred pounds for a, what is a 12 year old whiskey. This was about 150, I think, or maybe 140. And I kind of thought to myself, 15 year old cash strength, inaugural, you know, it's a good celebration bottle. Um, <clears throat> but here we are anyway. Um, I've had this sat in the glass for quite a while because Daft Mill always gives me, from the samples I've been lucky enough to try, always gives me just some really weird and wonderful smelling and tasting notes. And I tried this a couple of weeks ago, and indeed the video that is coming out next week, um, I put these two whiskies kind of side by side purposely. Um, but let's smell and taste and see what's happening with this. Oh, no, before I do that, if any of you do follow me on like Instagram and Facebook and all that kind of thing, I do have B-roll of like the back labels and stuff to show. <coughs> Um, but just to give you some info on how much uh, what this is produced, uh, this was harvested from Dam Park and Curling Pond Fields on the 31st of August 2004. It's chariot barley and among some of the last to be malted in Fife by Robert Kilger and Co. Before they closed, uh, this is 28 casks in this bottling and all our first full ex bourbon barrels distilled in 2006 and bottled in 2022 at 55.7% ABV. And of course it's natural colour and unsure filtered. It is a stunning example of bourbon cast maturation. I don't know if it's our white walls and this white label, but it's just yellow. Like it is the most perfect yellowy gold colour. Much like the whiskey I've just put it next to, which we'll be sampling for next week. But yeah, let's smell and taste and see what this Daft Mill's got going on. It always comes across as like a massive contrast of style. It always comes across as really light, but really powerful at the same time. So the instant thing I get is like jelly babies, jelly baby sweets, um, which for you non UK viewers, they're like gelatin. <laughs> it sounds weird to say it loud. They're gelatin sweets in the form of babies. 
bear, bear with me with that. And they're kind of covered in like a powdered sugar. But it has it to it. And then as I say that, this huge peanut note has kind of jumped out of it as well. Something I've had from a lot of Daft Mill. I think this is the third one we've reviewed on the channel. Uh, always orange juice, which is something I seem to be smelling more and more in bourbons. Like I was drinking Woodford Reserve Double Oak the other night and it just smelled of orange juice. It was bizarre. But this does too. As well as marshmallow, which again, another confectionery thing, tends to be covered in powdered sugar. Or some sort of sugar. If you can hear a gentle snoozing in the background, that is just our dog. Apologies. There's some spice to it too, like you're getting quite a lot of woodiness, like it's very effervescent, it almost feels like splinters of it, you're kind of getting it right at the end. Like lime jelly, lemon jelly, it's just so fresh and fruity, which is great because, you know, Daft Mill has become this beacon for lowland whiskey which is such a relief because Lowland whiskey for years, when I first got into the whiskey industry, was either grain whiskey, which is good, it's very affordable um, for older stuff. And it was Ockentosh and Glenkinchy, which are, are two whiskeys that have never really blown me away. They, they do, they, what they do, they do well. Um, but yeah, they've just never really sat well with me at all. And then between Daft Mill and King's Barnes and um, Lindor's Abbey, which I'm still actually yet to try any of. And what's the other one, Eden Mill. I can't wait to try some Eden Mill whiskey too, but Fife in general is just becoming like an amazing area for whiskey. And Clyde Distillery and all that sort of stuff. There's some really, really cool stuff in the lowlands now. And, you know, Daft Mill has become this beacon of it all. And it's also so grassy and light. There is, I think it might just be the alcohol percentage, but there is something giving off a vague acetone note. It's very subtle. But it is in there but it's just so much candied confectionery and like chalky sweet things and pick and mix. And I mean, it's like walking into a sweet shop, but you're slightly intoxicated. And then there's some exotic notes in there too. There's coconut, there's pineapple. It's honestly a pleasure to smell. Like, you know, as I say, it was gonna get opened anyway. Um, and sadly I lost a bottle of Highland Park, but it's open now. We've got half a bottle left to enjoy. But cheers. Let's see what Daphne 15 holds. Mm. Ooh. It is instantly so dry. This isn't gonna stop it selling out every time it comes out, but the dryness of it reminds me of like cast strength bourbon barrel Cavalan. It's like just pulls every bit of moisture out of your mouth. But then as you move it around your palate and you begin to dilute the alcohol. It stops being really sweet and confectionery driven as the nose is. And it moves into a very robust, chewy, oily sort of distillate. You got lingering notes in there of, it's almost cognac like. You know, considering it's 28 first fill bourbon casks, there are notes which are almost reaching into like raisin, sultana. Maybe not as he heavy a note as you'd get in a sherry barrel. But it is rich and chewy. Go for another one. The peanut thing comes back in too. And it's so nice. For someone who loves the smell of like sweet whiskey, especially things that have like a tropical edge to them, this is this really pulls me in. And then when you chew it, it becomes this like oily, viscous, nutty, drying. Almost, and I've never really said this for um, 
unpeated whiskey before, but it almost has a note of like coastalness to it. I think Old Pulteney, uh, I think Pine Leash, I think Brewer to a degree, like that saltiness, that intensity of oiliness. And many, 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 many years ago, um, I think it was the year that Lagavulin 12 year old got my whiskey of the year. So like a good five or six years ago that was now, that's scary. Um, I still need to find another bottle of that. There was a Loch Lomond whiskey shop exclusive. I think it was a, a 16 year old and it was matured, I think in French oak. And it reminded me of like being at a harbor when like fishing boats and stuff have rolled in. And this has that on the taste. Not of fish, obviously, but just that smell in the air of like diesel and salt. And especially being in the time of year we are now. You know, if any of you live in this sort of coastal cities, I, I don't unfortunately, but um, just that smell of the sea, but it's the taste of it here. But then to smell it, it's, you know, jelly and lime and lemon and uh, powdered sugar and all this sort of wonderful tropical stuff. It is incredible liquid. Um, paying, I think I paid £140. I think I said 150 before, but I think it was about 140 Because I remember someone from Berry Brothers ringing me and I was transferring money at the time, and I think it was 140 quid. And in all honesty, I think it's worth every single penny. This is an extremely complex, layered product. I don't want to use the word delicate because it isn't, because the nose is very fat and juicy, and the taste is robust and oily and full on. The finish is lengthy, and it moves into flavors that are almost like, um, like, uh, white vermouth like there's almost like a noily prat herbal french vermouth feel to the finish insanely complex um, obviously not particularly available i don't know what this thing is selling for these days i'd imagine more than what i pay for it maybe like 180 maybe even 200 pounds a bottle i don't quite think it's a 200 pound bottle of whiskey i will say that but for the money i paid for it if you can find it for that 140 150 mark I'm trying to think of things that are in and around that price point if you wanted to treat yourself. Um, obviously, it'd have to be an auction buy, uh, so you can incur a few more fees as well, shipping, etc. But it is delicious, and like I have to give it a nine. Like It is honestly just so good. The unavailability kind of knocks it down a bit, like I want to give it a nine and a half, but this isn't something you can just go out and get. If you live enough to, close enough to a really good whiskey bar, then you might be able to find a sample of it somewhere, but it's not something you can stroll to your local specialist retailer and buy, which is a sad thing. Um, but it does prove how good Daft Mill is as a product. But yes, this is Daft Mill 15, inaugural release 2022. That's a nine out of 10 from me. I'll replace that there, so it's out of the way. And I uh, thank you all for watching. Next week is a whiskey that I've been very excited for. Um, and it has some of the more unusual qualities that this one does. And the final note I'm gonna leave you with is that I've already talked about that white vermouth note that the finish has to this. Um, it also moves into that funky overripe banana area of Jamaican rum, especially on the taste on the finish, this Daft Mill 15. So if any of you've stuck around long enough for the end of this video, next week's uh, video is a rum matured whiskey and it's something that I've been very excited about managed to finally pick it up about two weeks ago. But uh, I'll see you all then. Have a good day. Bye.